How are you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This is volume 9 where we look at the relationships between Ka, Kb, Pka, Pkb. Let's go. Alright, volume 9, we look at the product of Ka times Kb, we talk about some of their relationships and then we have a look what's in the data book. So the IB understandings for 18.2 is that Ka times Kb equals Kw, and then the relationship between Ka and Pka is the negative log to the base 10. Now, this is derived because we have a dissociation constant for a weak acid and a dissociation constant for a weak base. And those two things can be useful when we do calculations. So for example, if we wanted to write the Ka value of ethanoic acid, we would show that it ionizes in water to form H3O plus and then the ethanoate ion. And we can write an equilibrium expression, an acidity constant for that reaction. Remember the acidity constant is the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the acid. We omit water because it's said to be constant. So the acidity constant is easily found. We can also write the base dissociation constant of ethanoic acid in water. Now ethanoic acid's base is the ethanoate ion. So here when we talk about that, we're talking about something like sodium ethanoate and how it would dissociate in water and then what it actually does in water. So we have our ethanoate ion, it will interact with the water molecules to form ethanoic acid and a hydroxide ion because the ethanoate ion is a weak base. So we can write the base dissociation constant again by doing the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of in this case just the ethanoate ion because it's the base to give us our Kb. Now if I got those two things together and equated them, made them equal to each other, we would find that Ka times Kb equals Kw. Now remember that Kw is 10 to the minus 14 at 298 Kelvin. So if we're given the Ka, then we can calculate the Kb. So we can rearrange as long as they tell us it's at 298 Kelvin, or we assume it's at 298 if they don't specify otherwise. Now acid and base dissociation constants are good descriptions, descriptors for the strength of an acid or a base, but usually their values are really small. So we use the pKa and the pKv values which are found in the data book to help us. Now the little p out the front of the Ka just means take the negative log to the base 10 of the Ka value. Now if something is a strong acid it will have a low pKa. If something is a weak acid it will have a very high pKa. And because it's a log relationship that means that a weak acid would have a low Ka. A strong base, well it will have a low pKa, very similar to the strong acids, so it would have a high Kb value, sorry, a low Kb value. A weak base will have a high pKb value and will have a low Kb value. So they're kind of inverse to each other. The data book contains a whole list of weak acids and their pKa values, and you're only given the pKa. So you need to remember how to transpose from pKa to Ka. Now if we have a look at just the acids, we can see that methanoic acid has the lowest Ka value, so that would mean it's the best acid. The one there at 5.03, it would be the weakest acid because it has the highest pKa value. On the bases side of things, we also have a list of the bases. The one with the lowest pKb will be the best base or the strongest base, and the one with the highest pKb, that will be the weakest base. In this case, phenyl amine. So volume nine, some top tips. Make sure you know the relationship, Ka times Kb equals Kw, and in any weak acid question, refer to the data book. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, Drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.